Hello everyone. Um, we are going to move on to our um, our classic princess style line um, activity. So this one's quite a large one. We talked about it over last week's lecture. Um, we talked about the fact that we are making this um, sleeveless princess style line dress with princess lines that are running to the mid shoulder, um, starting all the way at the very, very shoulder, all the way down through the waist, matching those seams down to the hemline. So it's gonna be sleeveless. It's gonna have a very simple facing along the neckline. Um, it's gonna look like this on the front with the princess style lines, and then this on the back with the princess style lines as well. And we talked about how we're adding facings to the neck on the back and the front, and then the armholes as well. Okay, we talked about how these would um, have a zipper in them if we were gonna create them in real life. What we're gonna do is we're going to pattern them as if they would have a zipper, but we're not actually going to construct them. What I have for you here is I have kind of a little uh, mock-up of what, again, it would start to look like. Um, this is unstitched, this is kind of just pieced together. Um, but what you can kind of see is that this is a bodice top, still very fitted. It has the nice shape from around the bust area. And this is what we're gonna make for our top. We're gonna have something similar for our back. And then you'll see here that I have all the panel pieces here for the skirt. And again, we're doing a princess seamed pegged skirt. So you can see there that you know, this is how the skirt would get pieced together. You guys don't have to sew it. Um, I simply have the pieces out so that you can see. Um, I'll have this constructed at the end so that you can kind of see what these little dresses would look like or will look like. Um, and this is again, to get you ready for your dress project. So another thing that we talked about last week was we talked about pattern cards. And we had mentioned that the note that we sketched on. We had talked about the fact that we're gonna break these pieces into a set of 12. So you can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're gonna have 12 total pieces and I've kind of numbered that along the side here. So what we're doing is we're creating a pattern card and a cost sheet to go along with these activities so that the person who gets this pattern knows exactly what to look for. This is very similar to the piece that comes in your um, envelope when you buy a commercial pattern, uh, the piece that has all the, um, all the images of the pattern cutting layout. So we're creating that to hand you know, to the person who's creating our little half scale mini princessing dress. So you're gonna wanna be able to draw the pattern pieces once they're complete, and you're also gonna wanna number them. And this numbered order is really important. So we're gonna talk about this more as we go through the process of creating this dress, because this is important to the person creating your garment. So what I've got here is I have a submission sheet. This are, these are all the pieces that we're going to create, everything that we're going to submit. And this is kind of an order of um, how we're going to go through it. We're going to start with the bodice fronts because that's what we're used to. You know, it's the easy stuff. We're going to move on to the bodice back because we've worked on that. That's pretty easy. Then we're going to move on to facings. So we're going to kind of jump ahead to facings. And we're going to work on the neckline facings and the armhole facings, okay, for full front and back. Then we're going to jump and we're going to move on to the skirt. So that's going to be the, the newest thing for us, the most you know, um, unfamiliar, I should say. Facings we haven't gone over yet either, but these are pretty straightforward and simple. Skirts are just a little different because we haven't gone there yet. Okay, these patterns are going to be a full set. So again, this is going to be a 12 piece. I'm going to use my marker instead so you can see that. Twelve-piece pattern set. Oh no, this one's drying out on me. It's 
okay so these patterns should include everything that our patterns should always have as long as it's a working pattern and as long as we want someone to be able to work with it it should include all of the labeling all of the symbols the notches seam allowances punchels if applicable placement for a zipper everything 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 okay and then you'll notice here that at the bottom it says make sure that seams match okay so again that's important because when we look back at, back at that little sketch that we drew we want to make sure that that's something that we're checking to make sure that the princess seams match we want to make sure that the side seams match princess lines side seams when the top gets connected to the back it's going to look something like this this will be open because there's going to be a zipper there and this will be from the back piece and we want to make sure that these princess lines also match here and match here okay so it's really important that we're matching things that we're matching all of these areas that are going to touch if you think about the side seam you want to make sure that not only does this side match down from armhole to hemline but we also want to make sure that all of these match across the waist and then again across going to the back because there's going to be the back panel with those pieces as well okay so it's really important that we're matching all of our seams that's something we're going to talk about as we go through the process okay so again 12 pieces and we are also going to work through with this dress is you're going to work through that pattern card and this is another page of the module and the cost sheet now you don't have to turn these in but i'm going to go through them so that i can get you familiar with them for your project so the reason why we have both of these are for a few things um, it prepares us for the uh, garments that we're going to create but it also helps us to keep everything organized so we're going to have you have both of these in a module the pattern card a record card and then the cost sheet and then you'll also see that you'll have a croquis this is a very straightforward, really easy to use croquis um, that I've put in the module for you. This is a great croquis to use because it makes it really easy to draw your flats. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll some paper out on top. Again, I'm using tracing paper because it's easy to see through. And what you'll see, I'm gonna use the finer point now. What you'll see is that with this croquis, especially this one on the left where she's very symmetrical and kind of straightforward, you can very easily use these lines on the figure to draw out what your princess seam dress is gonna look like. So we know that we're not adjusting the neckline at all, so we're just gonna kinda draw that how it lays, okay? And we're also going to draw the waist in, at the natural waist, kind of where the croquis ends because that's how we're gonna leave it. Okay, and then I know that my princess seams are coming from the mid shoulder over the bust down to the waist. So I'm gonna draw that also with a little bit of curvature because that's what my patterns do. I know that I don't wanna have a center front seam. I know that like the illustration from the book. So if I go to the book, hopefully you guys can see that. If I look at the book, you can see that there is no center front seam. So I would know that I want it to be spaced across. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and draw that on my flat. I'm gonna go across my shoulders, across to my shoulder tip. And I know that I'm not putting a sleeve on this, so I'm gonna make this sleeveless coming up away from her arm, no sleeve there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring it down the sides, bring it down her sides. I know that I have to have all of my seams matching, so, sorry, I kinda went out of the lines here. 
I'm going to take these princess seam lines and I'm going to continue them down her body to about her mid thigh, which is where our patterns end. And I'm going to draw her hemline. And again, we're making a pegged skirt, so it's going to be fairly fitted to her thigh. I'm going to go ahead and continue this princess line down to the hem. And I know that my skirt fits fairly well because it's got the shaping. And I know I'm making a pegged skirt, so it's going to fit to the body along those hips. Okay. And then, let me draw this just a little bit darker. And then essentially, I'm done with the front. And I can move my croquis out of the way. And I can see this really, oh, let me flip it over so you can see what behind it. This really simple, you know, really proportionate uh, flat. Okay, and then this is the flat for my front. This is why we like this croquis, because it gives us a very simple, straightforward croquis to work with for drawing our garments as flats. Now, something else that you want to do is you also want to draw your back. So what I like to do, since I don't have a back version here, I like to use the female figure again I like to use the front one, um, and then I am going to use this for the back. And the one thing that I want to realize is that one thing that's going to change is that you're not going to have the shape over the bust area because there's no bust on your back. And then the neckline is just going to be a little bit higher because we don't dip it down as far in the back for our bodices. So I'm going to start by drawing out the neck just a tad bit higher and draw out those shoulders. I know that I'm gonna have a center back seam. So again, if I look up at the book, I see that I have a center back seam. So I'm gonna draw that. I know I want to have a center back seam. And down from the waist, or sorry, down to the waist. Okay. And then I'm gonna draw that waistline over. And I'm going to draw those princess lines coming down fairly straight because, again, there's no bust area here. This is essentially just the back where the shoulders would be. I'm going to come up around the armhole because I'm not making a sleeve. So you'll see that it's, it's very flat. I'm going to bring the center line down because I know that there's going to be a center line that runs all the way down the middle of the figure because I'm putting a center back zipper in. I know that it's gonna go to the mid thigh just like it did in the front. So I'm gonna draw that hemline with my pegged skirt along the hips. And I'm gonna continue those princess seams down to the hem. And then I'm essentially done, so I'm gonna pull that out of the way. So what you'll see is the front and the back look pretty similar. They are pretty similar. One thing that I do want to do, especially considering that I want to identify the back from the front, so I'm gonna go ahead and write back here. I wanna draw in my zipper. So a zipper is really important for the person making the garment. This is something we talk about in beginning sewing. Remember in beginning sewing, I tell you, make sure that you know what a casing is supposed to look like as an illustration. Know what a zipper is supposed to look like. Well, that's because people look at that when they're deciding whether they're gonna make a project or not. So it's important to know what kind of closure or what kind of a technique is in this garment. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw in that zipper line that I'm gonna create in the center back. Now to do that, it's fairly easy to illustrate. I'm gonna place a center zipper. So what I'm gonna do is on either side of the center back seam, I'm gonna draw fairly close, illustrating that you know half an inch stitch, um, fairly close to the center back seam, this dotted line to look like a stitching line. And I'm gonna go all the way from the neckline and center back to the waist and then I'm gonna go past the waist because if you guys think about this, this is very important for this class. 
if you were to stop your zippers at the waist, it's gonna be very cinched in with that waist that we have from our pattern. So you're not gonna be able to get into the garment if you stop the zipper at the waist. So it's important to know that dresses with waistline seams, when they're fitted like our slopers are, you absolutely have got to push the zipper past the waistline down to the horizontal balance line right at the essentially like the top of the butt crack because what that means is that the widest part starts essentially here so we're opening up the dress so that we can zip it up right right where that widest part begins so this part is the widest part of the dress it's the widest part of the human it gets onto that person and then we can zip it up over that point if you were to stop at the waist with your zipper, you would not be able to get the hips through and you would end up tearing this waistline seam. So this is another reason why in intermediate sewing, you know, you learn that, you learn that, oh, we need to create a dress with a waistline seam because we need to be able to center this back zipper. So instead of um, focusing on that centered pattern and, you know, centering those seams, we're focusing on the fact that you need to be able to get into or enter this garment with the zipper that's gonna cut through the waist and go all the way to that HBL line. Okay, so that's important. So to illustrate that, I do these dotted lines and you can also draw a little tab at the top and just have a little tab hanging off. Okay, we do not need to draw those facings. Again, remember we're making facings for this, but one thing that you do need to do when you're doing flats is if you can see through it. So if you laid this dress on the ground, you would be able to see the back of this You'd be able to see through and you'd be able to see that there was a zipper back there and maybe the the label maybe the um, tag of whoever made it so i need to illustrate that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw the back of this dress and i'm going to draw that it has a center back seam and then i'm also going to illustrate that it has those stitching lines back there now that shows me you know the person making this that the back is you know can be seen through the front um, and that that there's a zipper down the center back there you can still draw that little tab if you might that helps for people to know that there's that zipper back there and i can't see anything through the armholes it's not a high low or anything so i can't see anything there so this is it this is how you guys are going to very neatly very clean draw the illustrations for your projects coming up you don't, again, need to do this for this project, but I'm doing it for you so you guys can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like. Okay, now, we're going to move on to the actual construction of the bodices, just the way that the book tells us. So I'm gonna have the kind of the book sitting up here. Hopefully, you know, I can reference that while we work through this. And Tracing paper out here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our two dart bodice front. Now remember, we made one of these just last week, but we're not going to use the one that we made. We're going to use the one that came with the book because we know that this one is symmetrical and that everybody's working with the same thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna follow the instructions on page 122. So you guys can kind of see, I'm gonna have these up here. You won't be able to see them come into frame uh, too much, but I just want you to know that you can really simply, easily uh, abide by all the instructions here um, in chapter six. Okay, so I'm gonna move this back out of frame. Okay, so we're going to start by tracing our two dart bodice front. And I have, again, on my sloper, a little indication mark for my mid shoulder. And I know that this princess line is going to go to the mid shoulder. So I'm gonna go ahead and while I'm up here, I'm just gonna mark that mid shoulder in. That way I have it, though I don't have to remeasure. Okay, 
tracing this up. Now remember, we also talked about last week how we are, we're essentially skipping one of the chapters or skipping chapter five. Um, it has to do with designing with darts. And again, I'm skipping the chapter solely for the purpose of you guys having more options when it comes to your projects that are coming up soon. Um, if I demonstrate it in class, you're not allowed to use it for the project. So I just wanna make sure that you guys have plenty of options to choose from. Okay, so I've traced out my sloper. Now what the pattern tells me to do is it tells me to draw a style line from the mid shoulder, which I've made a little indication of. Um, so my mid shoulder, and it says that it's in line with the back shoulder dart. So when I see that, I wanna make sure that it is. So I'm gonna pull out my back, my bodice back. And what I wanna do is I wanna match these shoulders. Well, that's a little bit hard to do, um, you know, when they're sitting the way that they're created with the, you know, the pencil marks on the fronts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my back upside down so that my shoulders can match each other. And I really just wanna make sure and if I get the shoulder at neck tip, if I line those up, I just wanna make sure that this dart starts right where my mark is, and it does. If you do that, and let's say maybe you've done the math incorrectly, maybe when you've measured you know, this shoulder and divided it by two, maybe you maybe put it in the wrong spot, maybe you're off by a little bit. Definitely come back and check that. Take your two shoulder pieces, lay them on top of each other, go from the, shoulder at neck and then line it up and make sure that that little mark right here is right where the dart starts okay so that's important so that's something that it calls out to you okay so drawing that style line in so I'm gonna go ahead and go from it says my bust point to my mid shoulder making sure that it's going to match up with the dart placement on my bodice back Again, that's gonna get us those matching seams that we absolutely need, Make that a little bit darker. Okay, um, then it tells me that I want to go from the bust point to a leg at the waist. So it's just saying that I wanna go from the bust point now to a leg, and it doesn't say any leg in particular, but to one of the legs of the waist. So I'm gonna go to the waist art, and I'm gonna match bust point to leg, Okay, and these are giving me those slash lines that I need. And then what it wants me to do is it says it wants me to cross mark. It says this is for easing control. And what that means is that if I look at the already, let me show you an already cut out pattern for the front. If I look at the front and the side front. I have a couple pieces already ready to go here. I'm gonna pull this one out because this needs a little bit easier to see without the seam allowances. If you look at the piece that's gonna come from the side, from the front, it's very curvy. So after we work this through, after we you know pattern this out, you're gonna see you're gonna end up with a really curvy um, line here. What, what once was straight is now gonna become this very curved piece. Because of this curvature, we get this really nice fitted kind of shape around the bust for the princess line. So the bust fits in there really nicely. But in order to sew that in without it looking really messy, in order for it to look as clean as the book shows, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, oops, I'm gonna pop you guys up there so you can see the book. In order for it to look clean and you know seamless and not gathered like this, we're going to need to put some easing points in there. And essentially what that means is that we're just going to know that we're going to be walking this in maybe we put some baste in there but we don't want it to be gathered or puckered or funny looking we just want to make sure that this smooth smooth line gets created by just easing the two seams together okay so that's important to add so like it says it says cross mark for ease control these are going to be the notches that we're going to create and it says two inches above and below the bus point well now that's for full scale so what we're going to do is we're going to go an inch above the bus point and then an inch below the bus point and we're going to make a cross mark and remember the cross mark is simply a perpendicular line Ooh. 
That's awesome. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna make it a nice perpendicular line. And these rollers are two inches wide, so you should fairly easily be able to cross marker across both of them. Okay, so I don't need to make them too deep, I don't need to make them too big, but just perpendicular lines to this new slash line that we've created. Okay, then it wants me to draw a slash line from the bus point um, across. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the pieces. So my next step would be to separate the two pattern pieces across those lines. So it says that it wants me to cross mark an X from the bus point okay, to a new location across the dart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces first and I'm going to separate them from each other. And cross this cutting line. So I'm gonna go up to my leg. Sorry if you can't see me cutting in here. Cutting on that slash line. And instead of making this a pivotal line, slash and spread, I'm just gonna separate them completely. Okay, so I'm gonna actually cut Clean through that bus point, which you normally don't do. Okay, so I have separated my bodice front into two pieces, and that's why we label them as bodice front and then bodice side front, because this is the side of my front, and then this one here is just my complete front. I kind of took a little bit out there. Don't cut sloppy. I'm gonna make sure that I fix that throughout the process. So, that one got cut a little funny. Okay. So what it wants me to do is it wants me to cross mark three quarters of an inch, it says from the bus point to a new location, it says the new pivotal point. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my ruler out and I'm going to draw a line from the bus point to my leg essentially just going clean across to the dart point. I can't, you can line it, you can try to line it up on one of the legs, but it's essentially not gonna match completely. You can take it and go from leg to point, that's fine too. Or you can just go from your bus point to the dart point and connect the line together, like the book shows. The reason for that is because we're just gonna use this to open this up and close this dart. So it doesn't need to be exactly on a leg. We're essentially just trying to find the new pivotal point. So then it tells us to mark three quarters of an inch, full scale. So we're gonna go ahead and go three eighths of an inch, half scale. So I'm gonna go along this line and I'm gonna count one, two, three. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, one, two, three. Okay, so I've made this cross mark, and I'm gonna label that as X, because that's what it tells me to do, so I'm gonna put an X there. Okay, then it says cut the pattern piece along that line, because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, make the side, uh, I'm sorry, it says side bust ease, and it says we're gonna cut 
from the slash line, from the bus point and dart point to, but not through the X. And we're gonna close off the legs of this dart, okay? So what they want us to do is they want us to cut along the slash line, I'm just gonna lift this up. Two but not through the new pivotal point along this slash line, two but not through. And then from the other side, I'm gonna get this out of the way for now. We'll get back to that in just a second. So two but not through across this lane. Okay, make sure that you leave a little hinge there. If you don't, it's fine. You can always stay it back together. But once we get this open, then what we're going to do is we're going to close off the leg and tape it down so that it doesn't have that dart anymore. Okay, I'm going to get the tape from this. Sure that I'm not forcing that dart line to wrinkle at all. I really just want that dart to close off completely. Get rid of the dart, touch the legs. Okay, so the legs are gonna touch each other. Okay. Hopefully that makes a little sense to you. Hopefully you can see all of that and see what's going on there. Um, again, this is coming directly from the book. I'm just following step by step. We created our slash lines. We separated the two pieces. Now we're doing this side bust ease where we're closing off the dart and then we're gonna talk about this area here making this curved next, which is gonna be here where we shape those style lines. And then again, if you wanted to make it for a bigger bust, it gives you some additional um, information there. Let's say if you, you know, are really busty, you can always open this up and make it larger. Um, and then we're moving on to the front after that. So what you'll see is that they label this in the book now as the side front. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and let me take my thicker pen. I've got it. And I'm going to just go ahead and label this as my side front right now, just so that I don't forget. So I'm just going to label this as my side front. Now that I'm getting multiple pieces, I want to make sure that I don't forget which is which. Okay. So now that we've closed this off, now it says that we need to retrace the side front panel. Um, what I'm gonna do instead of retracing the whole thing is I'm gonna put some paper underneath this. And then it says that we need to shape the bust curve as shown. It says the broken lines represent the original shape, which are obviously these lines here. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna blend. We're gonna bring this curve out just a hair we're gonna smooth it around the bus points. We're gonna make sure that we keep these little hash marks here so I can see my cross marks that have come through. These are gonna be our notches eventually. Remember those are those easing notches, so I wanna keep those. Um, and it tells us, it gives us a couple of guides. It wants us to draw inwards an eighth of an inch from my other leg. So let me get a tiny piece of paper. I'm gonna fill this in. I did, I made sure that I left a little bit of room for my seam allowances eventually. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually tape this down so that I can add seam allowance to my shoulder up here um, at one point. So I'm just gonna, instead of redrawing the whole thing, I'm just gonna tape this down to a bigger piece of paper. I'm just getting it prepared for my seam allowances later on also. So. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that out of the way just a hair so I can get that in camera. Okay, so I'm gonna do what it tells me first. It gives me a couple of marks that it wants me to um, follow. It says that at the bottom below this notch, on the dart leg, so on this dart leg, 
it wants me to draw inwards an eighth of an inch. Now, we are doing half scale, so we're gonna go with a sixteenth of an inch. So remember, these boxes are eight, but these little tiny guys here are sixteenths. So what I'm gonna do, again, below that notched area, I'm gonna draw inwards a sixteenth of an inch. You're kind of drawing that in. Okay, that's where I want it to suck in. Then you'll see that it wants me to blend about a sixteenth of an inch outwards along this portion inside of this notched area on the top. Again, we only have a sixteenth of an inch is like the tiniest measurement on our rulers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do half of that. I'm gonna do just a hair. Okay, so just a hair. Just the tiniest bit past, okay? So this gives me a couple of new lines to follow with my French curve. So I'm gonna pull out my French curve and you'll see that I'm gonna try and use it as best I can to blend this area as subtly as possible. So I'm trying to go over without taking anything off. I'm trying to make it a little bit curvier here. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna take this line. I'm gonna make this nice subtle curve. I'm gonna work it up. Now that is pretty good around this curve. I don't want to get it too curvy. I want it to kind of go and be subtle, you know, subtle when it comes back up to the top of this bodice. So I might even just pull out my quilting ruler now. Because this is pretty straight forward from here to here. And I think I'm just gonna kind of ease and blend this line back together. Okay, so that I have this new shape coming, starting on my original line and going and just blending into this curve. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. I'm just making it a little bit darker for you. And then once I get to a point here, I know that I need to curve back in. So I'm gonna take my French curve, or you know, whatever curve you have, and I'm gonna flip it upside down so that I can start to come back towards the body, kind of blending it along. I'm gonna blend it along this area first, and I'm gonna flip this guy over. And remember we talked about this, you're just walking the ruler. You're just using the ruler however you can to do what you want it to do. So you're gonna be flipping, flopping, flipping, flopping, and that's totally 100% okay. That is okay to do that. As long as you're getting those smooth lines, nice and subtle, that'll work out. Okay, so let me take this actually a little bit thicker marker, see if it'll work. I'm just drawing this blended line a little darker for you guys to see. And then this one kind of just bleeds into the original line. Okay, now this one's coming back. This one's coming back to the point here where we've kind of dipped in a little bit. So I'm gonna just draw this one just a tad bit darker. Okay. And then this one comes back eventually back to the waist on the seam that we originally had where we had those legs. So I'm gonna use my French curve again to really subtly connect this area so that I'm not taking off all too much. Just that little sixteenth of an inch that it called for. Okay. So now you can see this new, you know, pretty curvy blended line. Okay. So the next step, step five, is if, if you want add, you know, additional ease. So it says developing design for one dark pattern or if you more ease is needed for a larger bust. You can open this up and you can slash it more. So you can make a slash line across 
you know, this form, and you can open this up because what's going to happen in this area where we have this curvature, this is where the bust is going to have room to sit. Again, we're working with that kind of standard, you know, size eight, half scale size eight. Um, so not very curvy, not a lot of um, bust. Um, but if let's say you, you know, you have a small waist and, um, but you're very busty, you can always make these patterns adjustable to suit the person who's wearing it. So you can always slice open and put more ease in here so that a larger bust would be able to fit in. Okay, so that's it for the side dart for now. We still have to go through and we still have to add our seam allowances to it, all that stuff. But we're essentially done with this one for the moment. So we're gonna set this on the side and I'm gonna move on to my front. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that front piece. So. This is an optional front panel shaping. Um, so this is something that um, you don't necessarily have to do, but it's something that, again, you have the option of doing. What it says here is that to shape the front panel, place the side panel on top of the front, matching the waist and the bust point. So it says to take your front, lay it on top, matching the waist to the waist and the bust point to the bust point. And it says that we can remove, and I hope you can kind of see that, but underneath here, there's a little bit of extra room on the front panel. You can trace in this line onto the front and remove a little bit from your front panel if you want to have a little bit more shape under the bust on the front. Now, that is 100% optional. You don't have to do that, um, but it's something that you can you know, totally do. I'm gonna go ahead and leave ours because I wanna go for a kind of you know straightforward, like we've drawn here on our flats. We're gonna have it pretty straight lines. It would still be straight, but it would definitely contour a little bit more under the bust here to give you a little bit more room. Again, another optional thing to do, very similar to that optional um, opening up of the ease in the back. Okay, so if you want to do that, you can take out that little bit. But again, for me, I'm going to go ahead and keep it the way that it is. I'm not going to add that piece in. But I am going to tape this front piece to another piece of fa uh, paper. Okay, put them back over because I want to make sure that I have room for my seam allowances. Okay. Just cutting it a little bit close. I'm gonna move it down just to here. this down. This is just for my seam allowances. This is why it's kind of nice to keep all those scrap pieces so you're not wasting tons of paper all the time getting new pieces out. Okay. So, okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and label this as my front. And then this is my bodice front. Okay. And then really all I need to do to this piece in order to complete it is I need to add my seam allowances. I need to indicate these notches. Um, and then I need to do some labeling on this. So now that I have my front and my back, I can kind of look at these and I can say, oh wow, this one's pretty straight and this one's pretty curvy. But what I'm trying to do when I sew these together is I'm gonna take this seam here, waist to waist, I'm gonna lay them on top of each other. So hopefully you can see through my kind of pieces. I'm gonna lay them on top of each other and I'm gonna kind of walk them together so that they meet. And you can see that I have to draw my notch across still, but you can see that those line up really well. This curvy area, you know, if I tried to walk around it, ooh, you know, it's kind of, you know, a little funky, but if I match my notches again along the top notch to corner, you can see that those line up spot on perfectly, perfectly. 
So that's how we're gonna sew them together. And again, we're taking a somewhat straight or pretty much straight line and we're mixing it. We're gonna attach it to this pretty curvy line. And that's why easing is so important. So hopefully you remember easing. Easing we do in beginning sewing um, and intermediate sewing. Um, so please remember that. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I draw in those notches so that I know where to ease. So with these princess seams, these are pretty much straight lines. So like you'll see in the book, there's an area where it says completing those drafts. I'm gonna jump to that for the front at least, for the side front and the front. Um, it's telling us to draw in our seam allowances. And the only thing, again, we talked about this last week, the only thing that's different is that we're gonna do an eighth of an inch, not a quarter. So instead of this being a half full, full scale, it would be a quarter because we're not gonna put a sleeve on it. Their draft is for a princess style dress with a little puff sleeve, but we're not doing sleeves, we're going sleeveless. So the only difference here is that we would do it with a small seam allowance here, okay, for the facing. Another thing that they do is they place it on folded paper so that the front becomes one full piece. Um, that's something that we're gonna do a little differently too. Instead of folding it and cutting it out again, um, it takes a little bit more time and I'm not gonna have you guys go through that process. Simply, instead, instead of making a straight green line, we're gonna make that, I'm gonna use my pencil for this, we're gonna make that place on fold green line. Okay, so then you guys don't have to recut it out. I'm gonna save a little bit of time, save a little bit of paper. Okay, otherwise you guys can abide by the same things here. So, one of the important things is to add the seam allowances. Half inch full scale, quarter inch half scale. So along the seam, all the way to the bust point, I am going to add the seam allowances and you'll see that the line is essentially perfectly straight okay these are my notches so i definitely want to make sure that i'm keeping these notches here so that's something that i'm going to bring these lines across so that i know that these areas will be my notches for easing Okay, so I'm gonna draw those over because these again are gonna match the side front. Okay, don't forget those notches. I'm gonna add my quarter inch to my shoulder. That's gonna stay the same. They give an eighth, I'm sorry, they give a quarter. So we're gonna do an eighth for the neckline. So we're all doing facing. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add that in. Um, when you guys are using these rulers, the one thing that I think people are getting confused on is um, the eighth versus the quarter measurement. Um, and the one, the easiest way to do it is just count the boxes. So one thick line to another, you know, one area of thick lines, that's one full inch. Okay, so that's a square inch right there. Um, count all the boxes within them and you know different boxes are different measurements so the teeniest tiniest tiniest ones on the sides are the sixteenths the boxes the square boxes um, are the eighths and then you can break those up into quarter inches also half and then obviously you can get from that three quarters eighth five eighths blah 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 Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you guys are getting better with that. I'm just gonna tape this bit down here. This is a little easier to see too. Okay. Now, again, you guys don't have to put this on folded paper. So what you guys can do is you can just draw an extension of the center front line. I'm gonna go extend it up and I'm gonna extend it down um, just so that we can draw the waist on there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that place on fold line instead of taking this and folding it on paper, save a little time, save a little paper. I'm gonna label my center front and I'm gonna label my place on fold. 
Again, a little different than the book does it, but this will just save you a little bit of time. I already have my seam allowances everywhere but my waist. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this sideways, make it a little easier for myself. And that waist is gonna be quarter inch. Keep it the same, it's a straight line. Nothing to change there. And I'm just gonna make sure that I connect my center front all the way down and my side all the way down. Okay. Okay. Now that I've labeled my seam allowances, you want to make sure that you come in and you make those notches. So again, some people have questions about where do those notches go exactly? They're going along the seam allowances. So you're gonna have them at the bottom, along the waist, and along the side. Maybe you guys can use your notcher after this. I'm just doing it, I'm just drawing them in for now. I'm easing, so I need to have my easing notches. So I kind of drew those in already. Don't forget those easing notches. Use your ruler for the shoulder seam along the neckline and along the side panel. Okay. I'm gonna put my side, my princess seam right here. I'm gonna put my notch for that seam. And I'm gonna put my neckline seam notch there. And you don't need to notch on center fronts. If you were to notch on the center front, you would essentially be putting a hole. So remember, we don't put notches on the center front, so we're gonna leave these areas blank because we know that it's gonna be cut and it's gonna become one full front. Once you make your notches, once you make your seam allowances, once you put your center front, your place on fold, make sure that now you're also writing the size, which is half scale. We're going to cut, for this sample, we're gonna cut one on fold. And then what I want you guys to do for now is I want you to put blank of 12. Okay, so I don't want you to number these quite yet because this part is very important to the person sewing, the numbering system. And so we're gonna talk through that a little bit more as we work through this assignment. Um, but I want you to put kind of a slash or you know, blank of 12 because we'll number these soon. And that one is done. I'm gonna keep it off to the side though because I wanna make sure as I finish my side front that everything is you know matching. So what I need to do here, one important thing that I wanna do is I wanna draw this notch over. So I just wanna take the notch because it's sitting on one of the other legs. I wanna bring it over to the other side because this is eventually gonna get cut off right now. I need to add um, all of the same um, labels, the seam allowances, everything to this side front also. One thing that I also need to add is I need to add my grain line and so, if you look at the book, if you look at the text, you'll see that the front has the grain line. And again, we just took ours as a place on fold, but the side also has a grain line. So that's something that you definitely want to put back in. So what we've done is we've already kind of opened up this pattern piece, and now it's kind of difficult to figure out, ah, where where is that grain line? the grain line is always going to be parallel to the center line. So what I like to do, if I've already kind of cut it out and ah, I've already, you know, moved things around a little bit, what I like to do is I like to just bring my pattern piece back out, my original sloper that I used, and I just like to, wherever I can, get my quilting ruler out and I like to give myself just some lines to work off of. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just gonna make a perpendicular line across from the center front and I'm drawing it at the bottom near my um, waist seam. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and you'll see that I have this line, just this new kind of line just to help me out. And then I'm going to draw 
through, completely through. So you'll see from, you wanna go from really top to bottom of these pattern pieces. You want that grain line to run completely, completely through the pattern piece. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna find an area where it's kind of smack dab in the middle. And I'm gonna make a perpendicular line to that cross mark that I made from the center front. Okay, so this now is my new grain line. So it might seem a little kind of funky, like, oh, well that seems kind of, you know, not straight according to this line necessarily, but it's not based off of your waistline. It's not based off of any lines on this side of the figure. It's based off of when we sew these together, you know, boom, boom, boom. We want these lines to essentially be, when sewn, parallel, okay? And that's why it's nice to go ahead and use striped fabrics, because you can see when you use a striped fabric, this line here, which would be you know the center line, this is a straight line, and these lines run parallel to that line, so everything goes consistently, okay? So this is a little bit confusing because um, finding the grain line once you've already opened it up. Another thing that you can do too is once you do that initial trace, so when you very, very first start, Tracing. So when you're at this point here, let's get this out of the way. Before you start to, you know, close this off, before you do any types of pivoting. So when you have it, you know, still open like this, as you just trace it down, you can always, you know, at that point, take your pieces. And you can always, you know, draw a line across before you get to the cutting and tracing and, um, you know, all that process, if that makes it a little bit easier. So you can always make this kind of perpendicular cross line so that you have a place on these pattern pieces to go ahead and draw your green line after. So that's just an option. You can kind of do that beforehand. Um, it gets you going. Take them back down real quickly. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bring my side front back into frame and I'm going to Draw, finish drawing this grain line by adding arrow lines on either side. So I want to cut through the entire pattern piece and I want to make sure that I'm doing arrows pointed to the top and arrows pointed to the bottom because that's an indication for grain line. Okay, so that tells me this is the grain line. You don't have to write grain line on it. Those arrows tell the sewer or the cutter or everybody that that is the grain line, that that's how they're going to line it up on the fabric. Okay, now once I draw my grain line, I have it labeled as side front. I know that I can write on there half scale. Cut. How many? That's the next question. How many pieces am I going to cut? Since I haven't drawn a place on fold line, and I think I, you know, I'm looking at this figure, I look at the drawing that I have, I look at my little sketch. I know that for this front, I only need one. I need one big piece for the front. But for the side fronts, I'm gonna need two of those. And I'm not gonna fold them. I'm not gonna place them on fold. I need two separate pieces, hence the single grain line. So what I'm gonna label this as, is I'm gonna label this as cut two on grain. Okay, so that's a little different. That's something that we haven't really done yet. Normally we've been cutting it on fold. We don't want to cut this on fold. We don't need to cut this on fold. Yeah, we're going to have two pieces of, we're going to have two layers of fabric, but we're not lining this up with the fold anywhere to make it into, you know, one piece. This is not like the Valentine's cutting a heart in half. This is just cutting two pieces on two layers. So we're going to use two pieces of fabric to cut this pattern piece out because we're going to cut two on grain. Okay, that's a little different. And then again, I'm just going to have you guys for now do blank of 12. Okay, we'll get to that later on. Okay, got my grain line. 
I know it's a side front. I've labeled the cut. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the seam allowances. I'm gonna add these pretty quick, not very neat, sorry. Um, theirs again is a little different than ours. We're doing a facing for the armhole. So please just add an eighth of an inch to the armhole, not a quarter. Take your time on these. I'm kind of flying through it. Okay. So that's my eighth of an inch for my underarm. Again, we're doing an armhole facing. We're not doing a sleeve. It's a little different than the pattern. My shoulder stays the same. My shoulder's a quarter inch. That stays. Then I have this princess seam. I need to add seam allowances there. So I think the easiest way to do that is use my French curve. I'm sorry, my quilting ruler, and just walk the curve. Um, this is a fairly straight line, so we're going to go ahead and stick with that quarter inch measurement. Okay. It's pretty straight from here to there. From here is where I'm just going to start to walk it. Still pretty straight. Now it's starting to get curvy. So now I want to walk in this curve. It's really, really, really important that you guys are being really meticulous with these rulers and with your lines. Um, these are teeny tiny little patterns. Um, so just being off by a sixteenth of an inch makes a really big difference. And that's how I want you to feel about your clothes too, that you're gonna make full scale eventually. Being off by a sixteenth of an inch is gonna make a big difference depending on how fitted it should be. So you really want to be meticulous about drawing these seam allowances correctly, drawing all these lines really straight, okay? Really smooth. Okay, once you get the quarter inch for your princess line, then you can go ahead and draw in your waistline seam. I kind of already did with that cross mark on accident, so I'll go like a little bit darker, okay? And there you go. Now you've got all of your seam allowances added. What you're gonna do is you're going to mark all of the seam allowances with notches. So I'm gonna do that kind of quick and dirty here. I'm gonna do my seam here for my princess seam. This is not a center front, so I'm gonna mark the side. Ooh, I remember I have that notch area now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring this over and I'm gonna notch it. I think that one kind of dark because it was kind of sitting on top of my other notch before. This is my easy notch. And I'm going to hold up my other piece to it right now so you guys can kind of see. So i got to make that. I also have to bring my easy notch over from the top. I'm going to draw that in also. Okay. I'm going to do my seam allowance for my armhole. For my side seam. I'm sorry, my notch is my notch for my <coughs> armhole notch. My notch along my shoulder. Notch. Lots of notches. Ah. Oh. Notching across. Careful because once you're, if you're, you guys are doing a pencil, but I'm doing a pencil. I might bleed. Okay. Tons of notches. My really important ones are those easing notches. Okay, so remember I'm easing in this area. Okay, from this notch to this notch. And out of my seam allowances, I've labeled it. I have a grain line. This is ready to cut out. So I'm going to, sorry, take the quick minute to cut this out because I want you guys to see how important it is that these all match up and that those notches are labeled correctly. So give me just a moment, I'm sorry. This is a little tedious. Okay. 
And you guys really do want to kind of take this really, yeah, careful time to cut everything perfectly. I'm probably going to lose this piece now because I just cut off all my tape. So just be careful. I might want to come in from the back real quick and put a piece of tape on so I don't lose everything. This is the downside to taping to one giant piece for seam allowances. Ah, you'll lose stuff. Actually, I'm going to stop real quickly and I'm going to just tape. Let me tape, let me tape, let me tape, let me tape. Kind of tape. Well, I really don't need that either, so maybe I won't tape it there. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if I cut across this if it will, if I'm gonna lose it. I think I will, but let's see. This whole thing didn't need extra paper, but I just taped it under. And I need to hug it on myself. Let's see. Yeah, so technically, I mean, I don't really need all of this paper. So what you could do is you can kind of cut away everything that's flopping around here. So I'm just gonna take off all of the extra. Careful when you guys do this, if you do this, not to cut off anything that you still need. But I didn't need all that, so I just to make it easier on myself. I'm just gonna tape this down, tape that down, and tape that down. Okay. I really don't need this either, so just again, just to make it easier for myself. Okay, there you go. Now you have this nice little side panel, okay? This again, I'm not gonna cut this one out perfectly, but you guys wanna cut out all your pieces, but I'm cutting this one out meticulously just so that I can show you that if I take these seams, I line them up exactly how I would sew them. I'm bring it in a little camera a little more. I match those notches, boom. I match that stitching line and I run them along each other, kind of walking the seams. My notches, boom, my notches match up perfectly. This amount of space from here across to this notch is not exactly spot on. There's a little bit extra on this curve and that's good. That's the easy mark, remember? But from this notch up to this shoulder, bring this in a little more, it does match spot on perfectly. Do you see that? And that's what's important. So this amount of space in here, this is gonna get eased in. Again, you can put a baste in there if you want, or you can ease it by hand. But this curvy, curvy, curvy area is just gonna be worked into this somewhat smaller space. And that's how we get that curvature on this bust area. Okay, so this is what you wanna do for all of your pieces. You're gonna do something very similar to the back. So for the back piece, I'm just gonna kind of run through it really quickly. Um, because we just went through it, you know, piece by piece by piece with the front, so. through the first part of this draft for you and then you guys can go through and you know finish off everything else it's pretty straightforward once you get past the separation okay so for the back piece we're doing something very similar we're going to trace the entire sloper so that we can split it into two pieces so I'm gonna start on this dart area because this dart area is so important. I'm just gonna start there. <coughs> Did I? Okay, tracing along. Whole sloper traced. I don't know if I did that leg, so I'm gonna do it again just in case. And run my 
double notch in the back. Remember that indicates that it's the back of the piece if there's more than one notch or more than the front. And yep, and I'm good. Okay, so I've traced my back piece just like I did my front. Okay, now what it wants me to do is it wants me to place my um, curve on the shoulder dart leg closest to the neckline. So it wants me to take a curve. So I'm going to use, it says my skirt curve. So they're talking about your either your hip curve or your very form curve. So they're saying take one of your curves and they want to have you place it on the shoulder leg. That's the dart leg, sorry. That's closest to the neckline. And they want you to put it on the waist dart point. Point, okay, so the point of the dart. And they want you to draw in the princess line. So using this curve, going from the leg closest to the neck to the dart point, sorry, I'm kind of leaning over the camera. I'm gonna draw in this new princess line. Voila, pretty easy, okay? So once you draw that line in, now you can shift the shoulder dart like it says. So it says shift the shoulder dart point to the style line and redraw the dart legs. So what they're just saying is they want you to simply take this down. They just want you to shift over the point of the dart to the line that you just created. So I'm just gonna shift it over, so the end of it there. And then they just want you to redraw in the leg on the opposite side. So I'm essentially just shifting over the dart to this new princess line. Now we're not gonna keep this dart, but we're shifting it over because we need to have that amount of fabric removed. So just work through the pattern, shifting it over, okay? It looks like it almost, you know, is exactly where it used to be, just ever so slightly moved over. Okay, we're moving that because we're gonna now separate these pieces, okay? So we've shifted the dart over. Now we're going to cross mark the dart points on the style line. So I've got a dart point there that I've moved and I've got my dart point here that is just original. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cross mark. So I'm just gonna make a perpendicular line, not too big, across, okay? And then same thing up here, I'm gonna make a perpendicular line just across, not too big. And now I'm gonna separate my pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna, it doesn't really matter what leg you cut on, I'm just gonna cut on the left leg so that I can separate the center back from the side back. up my new princess line so I'm kind of disregarding the old dart leg. Okay. So let me take this down. Okay. So now I have this one panel here that looks pretty much like the book. So if I pull the book in, sorry. My back piece. Didn't have to do much to it. It pretty much looks like this back piece. We still have to add seam allowances. Notice that this one has this really fat seam allowance. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Okay, so we're gonna add seam allowances to it, notches like it shows, all that jazz. But this one's pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna just bring this side back into frame so that we can look at this one and say, ooh, well this one doesn't look like it's, you know, totally ready to go. I've got this like weird shape here with the dart that's kind of, what, what do I do here now? And then if I come down here, oh, I have this dart leg too. So I'm gonna start with this side one first because this one needs a little bit more work than the center back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place some paper underneath. I'm not sure if this will be enough. I'm gonna get a longer piece. Okay, 
So I'm gonna add a little bit of paper under here. This one's a little bit, you know, more complicated because there's a little bit more to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out my hip curve again because what we want to do is we just want to blend this line. So as we separate these, they've kind of become, oh sorry, they've kind of become abrupt lines, like a straight to kind of curvy. And then we have this kind of straight to kind of curvy. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my hip curve or my very form curve or, you know, not my, my French curve is just too, too curvy. So if I pulled out my French curve, it's just a little bit too um, dramatic, really. Um, I could, I mean, I could kind of use like this edge of it here for sure. Um, but I'm sorry. I'm just going to use my hip curve because it's a little bit more subtle. So I'm going to bring this over. I'm really just going to create this really subtle curvature on both of those lines. And I can even go a little bit more. Settle like that. Okay, so this is gonna be super, super minimal. Okay, so I've really just taken off like a 32 of an inch there, nothing much. So I'm just gradually getting this line to connect. And you can see that this line just is going there. Okay, so nothing crazy. Same thing up here. I don't wanna take off too much of anything. So I'm just gonna gradually come I'm just going to draw this line just there. So that's my new line there. Okay, so pretty easy. Nothing too crazy. <clears throat> just making those lines subtle. Okay, now this piece is going to need seam allowances. And again, this is the princess seam, and I'm going off of my new line. So I'm going to walk around that new leg. Okay, add my seam allowance to this princess line. Okay, all the way down. And this line is just ever so slightly curvy, so I'm just walking it the whole way. Uh, and I'm coming to that point where I've blended those lines, so making sure that I'm on the correct blended line when I add my seam allowance. And then this line essentially becomes perfectly straight now because this was a dart leg. So I'm going to line that up and then draw that seam allowance down. Okay, some important things on this seam allowance are those notches. Those are for easing also. So I'm gonna take that cross mark and I'm gonna put it on the seam allowance and that's gonna be one of my notches that I have to use the notcher for. Same thing at the top for that other dart that no longer exists. I kinda of just got rid of that. I'm going to make my notch there. Again, remember this is the easing. Easing in between that notch and this notch, okay. Now I'm gonna add seam allowances to my shoulder, easy peasy. You guys are gonna add seam allowances to your armhole, eighth of an inch, side seam, bottom. You guys are gonna label this completely, add your notches everywhere and cut it out from paper, okay? So you wanna complete this just like you did the front pieces. What you also want to do is you wanna make sure that you're adding your grain line. So that's something that you can do again, kind of like we did it with um, the front piece where I just like to kind of bring this out, my old piece. And I luckily have this horizontal balance line that I can really easily use. So I'm gonna draw a straight line here and a straight line there. And then I'm just gonna connect those two straight lines. So I just use that horizontal balance line because it's perpendicular to 
the center back, which is on the straight up grain. And I'm gonna put two pointed arrows to indicate grain. Okay, and then just make sure, like I said, you guys are labeling everything. So this is my side back. Okay, still half scale. Uh, this one, similar to the front, is gonna be cut two on grain, because again, we have this specific grain line, and it's piece something of 12. We'll get to the numbering later on. Okay, finish it out. Don't, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Have the seam allowances, not just all that stuff. Okay. Then the last piece for the top is this, like the center back piece, or just the bodice back. So we're gonna call this the bodice back. So I'm gonna label this now as bodice back. This one, when we cut it, we cut it, you know, pretty clean. So really all I need to do to this one now is I need to add seam allowances um, to this area. So let me grab a skinny piece of paper for that area, just so that I can tape it down and kind of get the seam allowances going for me. Okay, so this line, pretty smooth, pretty straight, nothing that I really have to do to it because we didn't shape it, but I do wanna add my seam allowances to it so that I can indicate the notches. So princess seam again, we're gonna go ahead and go with that quarter inch because it's a pretty much straight line. Move my way up. And then this is where it gets a little curvy, so I'm just gonna walk the ruler. Sorry, my hand is in frame. Seam allowances to the shoulder. Seam allowances to the neckline. This is an eighth of an inch. And then do this kind of rough and quickly. Make sure you're doing this nice and neat. I'm sorry, I'm just going fast for the sake of the demo. allowances to the waist. Okay, I'm gonna wait on the center back real fast. I want to make my notches before I forget. So I'm gonna bring the notches over. Remember, these are those easy notches. These are the notches, the cross marks that I made off of the dart points. So I'm gonna draw those in right now so I don't forget. Remember, we're easing this area here to here. I, you guys want to make sure that you're putting in your notches for all of your seam allowances. Don't forget those. Use your notching tool. Okay, little guys here. Okay, all those notches, all the seam allowances. We have, however, forgot a few things. We have forgotten the seam allowance on the back. I waited on that because just like the book shows, remember there was that really big fat seam allowance here? The reason why there was a big old seam allowance on the back is because this is where we're gonna put that zipper. Remember, we're putting a zipper in here, okay? So instead of doing a half an inch full scale, they're gonna place a full inch full scale. Now, it just kind of depends with zippers. You can go anywhere from a half to a full inch. So sometimes it's three quarters, but we're just gonna keep it simple. And we're gonna pretend like we're gonna do a full inch full scale. So this seam allowance down the center back is actually gonna be a gigantic, it's gonna look huge, 
a big old half an inch. So it's gonna be a really big seam allowance, bigger than we've ever done before. Okay, so hopefully this looks huge. Hopefully I've been doing it, you know, full scale. Okay, so now we have this massive, gigantic seam allowance down the back. And we're not placing this on fold now. So this is not being placed on a fold line and all. So now I know that I need to draw in a grain line. So with my center backs, it's really great because I already have this straight line here. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna find an area that goes clean through the whole um, pattern piece. And I'm just gonna line up my ruler with my uh, center back line. Line that up. And I'm sorry, I'm trying not to cut through my labeling of the back, but it's going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to draw all the way from one side of the pattern, all the way to the other. Boom, boom. Now I have a grain line. So I've got my grain line. I'm going to label my center back. Because I need to know where that is. I'm going to also notch my center back. So I'm gonna put a notch here and here. Those are really important notches. Those tell us that this is the very, very center, the center back of the garment. Very important that it stays straight. I now have this very wide seam allowance. You'll notice that on the uh, book, they indicate two notches at the top. I'm gonna do that too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna do it from the side. I'm gonna come down three eighths of an inch. So I'm one, two, three, right here. And I'm gonna make a notch, a single notch. The reason why I'm coming down three eighths of an inch is because this is going to indicate to the person that there's a zipper here and that the zipper is gonna stop three eighths or usually five eighths away from the top of the uh, um, edge of the fabric. That gives us enough room to put a hook and eye up there. So I'm gonna back down about a quarter of an inch and I'm gonna make my first notch. A quarter of an inch away from that, I'm gonna make a second notch. Because we're doing halves, let me see if I can pull this down. Ooh, sorry. Because we're doing half scale, I'm gonna try and put this an eighth of an inch away. That's a little difficult to do um, with your notcher. It kind of makes it a little bit too floppy. So I'm gonna try and get about an eighth of an inch away there, and I'm gonna put my second notch. Again, remember, I'm dropping it down about a quarter of an inch to indicate that the zipper is gonna end there, just like it would on a normal pattern. Um, we have enough room for our hook and eye. And then I'm gonna put a second notch there simply to indicate that this is the back. Remember, two notches for back, single notches for fronts. So if this was, let's say, maybe at a center front zipper, um, then you would have a single notch. We're doing the double because it's for the back piece. Okay, so now I know that there's a zipper here. I know where my zipper is gonna end. Uh, it doesn't really tell me where my zipper is gonna stop here. And again, we know that it's not gonna end here because we drew on our flats that it's gonna go past the waistline in the back and it's gonna stop on the skirt. So we'll get to that drawing, how we're gonna indicate that once we get to the skirt pieces. We're simply working on the tops right now. Okay, so if I look at this, I've got an extension. We call this the extension for the center back for the zipper, a zipper extension. I've got notches to indicate that there is a zipper back here and it's a back because there's two of them. I've got my seam allowances. I've notched all of my, you know, seams, all my seam allowances. I have my easing notches. I have labeled my center back, which is super important. I've notched that also. I have my grain line. And again, you can label this as center back, half scale. Cut, and if you think about this being a center back with a seam, there has to be two of them, so it's cutting two, and here's my long grain line on grain. No folding there, and it's a piece blank of 12. Okay, I know that that was a long one, um, but it's just really important that you guys kind of understand the process of 
creating this princess panel. So right now we've gone through just the front, the top four. Make sure to cut these out, label everything correctly. Then we're gonna move on to, now that we've created the bodice top front and the bodice top back, now we're gonna move on in the next video to the skirts.